Good morning friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options and this is the Morning Worker Prep video for December 27th, 2022. Well, Friday last week we had a pretty good rally following through to the upside and particularly surprising to me just how bullish the market it has been considering all of the really ugly economic data that we had last week. However, what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we may want to approach the market for today. First off, when I take a look at the Dow and we show this downtrend in here and the fact that we bounced right off of that support level, I've got to give this up to the bulls and there's no way else to look at this. The bulls are very, very strong here in the Dow and they are surprisingly resilient. Um, I don't know how much longer we can ignore the economic data, but so far we have absolutely no concern about it. And I think there might be an element here of just that end of year possible little um, Santa Claus pop. You know, we oftentimes get those between Christmas and New Year's um, Santa Claus rally. But it is a little bit concerning to me that we are um, in the mood to just ignore everything and buy. Now, having said that, when I look at the Dow, there isn't much of anything else we can do here. We look at that diamonds chart, we certainly are bullish and we um, held these support levels in here. And as a matter of fact, if you look, we came through, uh, we have four major tests down here and just a rejection of this area wanting to move higher. So consequently, this diamonds chart, as you can see, as we push up, we're gonna start looking for these resistance levels in the chart. You can see on Friday, we broke through that little resistance area in the chart and we're continuing, uh, well, excuse me, we didn't break through, but this morning we're trying to uh, pop through that in a substantial gap up um, in the morning and we're looking at a resistance level right in here that we may be testing in the chart and if we can push on through that then we may push on up now what could be causing all of this bullishness this morning well again we could have that look that big hope of that little Santa Claus rally and also we have kind of the end of year window dressing that could be going on. All those institutions have all this money that they need to put to work before the first of the year from the 401ks and things like that. So we'll want to keep a close eye on it because it is possible we could continue to follow through to some upside moves to test those resistance levels. And if we look at the technicals here in um, the IWM, or excuse me, the, the diamonds, you can see we've had a pretty good situation here where we bounced off of that 200 day, got back above our 50 day moving average, and now we're pushing up here to test our 500 day moving average to see whether or not we're gonna pump on through that and push back up into that major resistance zone in the chart. Now, if we look at the SPY, unfortunately our SPY, not nearly as bullish. You can see um, SPY pushing up here on Friday, holding this bottom. So we've got to give that part up to the bulls. They, they held in here good. But we also have to recognize that well, we broke this overall upside trend. And not only that, we still have the major downtrend in the chart. So the Dow, while it remains bullish, we have none of the other indexes showing us that bullish. So you wanna kinda of keep that in mind. We're, we're utilizing the Dow really heavily to try and inspire buying in the other major indexes, but it really is only 30 companies trying to lead the Dow higher. So consider that carefully. If we take a look at the chart in here, you can see we grabbed this support down in here and then did follow through on 
um, Friday to push on up here in the chart, but we really didn't fix anything here in the SPY. If you notice, as we pushed up, we didn't break through that resistance right there. And although we're gapping up this morning to maybe test that area, just keep in mind if those bulls continue to stay inspired and if they trigger a short squeeze today. And I think there is a possibility that they may be working to trigger a short squeeze here today, that we may push on higher and retest that resistance level in the chart right in there. So watch that close if they stay uh, very, very inspired. And if we take a look um, overall, um, with our moving averages. Well, that's a push back up toward our 50 day moving average. Notice the gap up this morning is looking to test the eight exponential, which is underneath the 50. And we will want to consider the fact that here on the S and P 500, we have a moving average squeeze that is above our price action, not particularly bullish. So kind of keep that in mind. If we look at our QQQ, well, Similar situation here in the NASDAQ. You can see with the problems that we've had here with big tech, NASDAQ continuing to show that overall downtrend, that bear market is still in play on the QQQ. Now we've certainly bounced back up, but you'll want to keep in mind, we broke this upside trend here. We broke that upside trend from here and we're particularly bullish here or bearish here in the NASDAQ. I think probably the most bearish index right now in the market. Now, if we take a look at where we are um, on that Friday close, you can notice that Friday close, we pushed back up here trying to recover some resistance in the chart and didn't quite make it. This morning, we're trying to gap up a bit in that chart, which really isn't um, fixing much of anything here in the chart, although we're trying to see that bullishness here this morning. And if we get more inspiration here in the chart, well, then we'll look for maybe a push push maybe to test this level right up in here where we popped up high we're going to push into some resistance and if they can continue to push beyond that then we'll start looking for these resistance levels up here unfortunately when we look at the nasdaq we have other concerns here we have um, our eight exponential moving average has crossed sharply down below the 50 here and you'll notice that the 50 day moving average above is corresponding to that resistance right through that price action here Notice our 34 EMA, 20 um, simple moving average are um, very, very close to crossing down, if not doing it uh, 34 EMA to already. And you can see we've got a potential technical issue here in the NASDAQ. So be really careful with this um, pop this morning and, and this potential rush to try and buy here this morning, just being inspired by the Dow lot of issues here to deal with yet. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM also had a really good bounce back rally. We did the same thing here that we did on the Dow. We held that price support. Good hammer followed through on Friday. This morning we're trying to get a big pop here in the Russell 2000. And if you take a look across here, if we uh, can pop through that resistance again here in the chart, well, then we have those areas and this is a fairly substantial resistance. You'll notice right in here, all of these tops, these bottoms across here, that's a pretty big level of price resistance in the chart. But if we can push through that, then we'll look right back up into here into this resistance area. Now, you will want to keep in mind when it comes to the Russell to IWM, we have, although we held this support in here, we made a lower high followed by a lower low in the chart and any rally back up to a potential resistance area and a lower high sets up that follow through downtrend. That doesn't mean we can't rally into the end of the year, but as long as we don't break above that downtrend or break above that resistance in the chart, we are still officially in a downtrend in the IWM. Now, taking a look here, you can also notice that our technicals here are showing us some damage. We've got our 34 EMA, our 20 moving average closing down below our 50 day. We've got our eight exponential sharply lower. 
so we've created a pretty substantial technical and price resistance zone up above here in that chart. Now let's go one step further. Let's take a look at our VIX. And this has been something that has been really surprising to me. And I think, again, it's that hopefulness of, that we may still get that relief rally, that um, Santa Claus rally, end of year window dressing, whatever you want to call it. Still hope that we're going to get that going here in the chart. Now, if you look, we've had um, a fear dropped pretty substantially on Friday that um, just hopefulness that we're going to continue to, to rally back to the upside. And I think this morning's gap could drop our VIX even lower. Now, I do think it's remarkable with all of the comments out there that 2020 three is going to be really challenging all of those things that we have really seen no fear despite um, some of the really ugly economic numbers that we received last week we just don't care now that's okay market doesn't have to care and remember it doesn't have to make sense but what this shows us here is that the market really is not fearful at, um, at the moment and maybe they should be but we should be really cautious and careful of fighting the direction of the market. If the market wants to rally, it's going to do it, whether um, you want to be bearish or not. Or if you want to be bullish, you want to also be careful in recognizing the fact that maybe the market could be a little bit complacent with the economic data that's out there that hasn't been all that favorable. So watch that closely and carefully. Let's take a look at our uh, T2122. Now T2122 is that really um, uh, indica indicator that just gives me lots of good clues for market condition. And what we have seen here in the last few days of this market condition is a lot of confusion, but we have also seen a pretty substantial hold here at um, these low levels in T2122. So the rally on Friday pushed us up to the midpoint here in the chart. Now what that means in T2122 is we don't know which direction that's going to take us. Remember that um, all T2122 is just tells us where our pressure points are when we're overbought or oversold in the chart. And if you look right in here, we're in the mid range. So that means we have basically about a half 50 50 a chance of really uh, a nice upside move or a downside move. Now this morning, the futures are showing us a substantial gap. So it's very possible with that substantial gap, we could see T2122 this morning open pretty stretched out, moving back up. I'm not going to say it's going to be in the overbought area, but stretching toward that overbought condition in the market with this uh, morning pop. So you'll want to watch that carefully here today. If we take a look at our T2108, well, T2108 had a nice improvement on Friday, and that is we pushed off of this little support area and improved. But you will want to keep in mind, it wasn't so much to just make you think, oh my gosh, we're just super, super bullish here in the market. By the way, this is the percentage of stocks above their 40-day moving average. And although we improved, we held this um, uh, area right in here as support. Well, just keep in mind, it really wasn't all that impressive. We didn't break that last high that we saw um, on Wednesday, and we still have uh, last Wednesday, and we still have significant resistance above. So you want to be careful with the idea with just the Dow showing so much bullishness that we should just rush or chase heavily into the market. Considering 38% of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average, um, it may be a little bit more on the oversold than the over um, overbought basis here, but certainly not um, that warm and fuzzy that says, my goodness, we are so bullish, we just have to rush and rush and rush. Let's take a look at our T2107. T2107 Im um, improved better than T2108, the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average. Notice that they held in here and held a higher low even in here on the pullback. Um, and so Friday's move made um, that look a lot more bullish here in the chart. And if we take a look 
um, across here, we still have a resistance area that we need to deal with, but I'm guessing this morning's gap up is going to deal with that pretty easily and pop us back up through that resistance. But keep in mind, we still have some work to do. 40% 40, 40 of the stocks holding above the 200 day certainly is hopeful. And if we can get that little bit of a relief coming in here, then we may actually see this improve pretty substantially today. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now T2101, it is, whoops, um, is a little bit difficult to read here recently because we experienced, and it's pretty common, uh, very low volumes um, over the holiday um, or moving in toward the holiday. And the, the other thing today that we want to keep uh, uh, pay attention to is there's a really good chance we could see pretty low volumes today. If you've looked out there and seen all of those uh, flight cancellations and things like that, uh, people being challenged by this winter storm that ran through the country. Um, we could see a lot of folks just not able to get back home and, um, you know, back to their computers. So, um, and, and it's pretty common too that a lot of people just extend their vacations all the way through the first of the year, take that time off. So we could experience low volume here yet today. So kind of keep that in mind that T2101 may be a little bit confused. If we take a look at our economic calendar, for today. Our economic calendar is um, relatively light. Um, we do have um, one number here this morning that's going to be pretty important. Um, we've got international trading goods. We'll want to keep an eye on that. The consensus on that. Well, international trade has been um, slipping here recently with the weakening of the dollar. Our trade deficit has been widening out, so we'll want to keep an eye on that. We've got retail advanced um, inventories. That's, you know, important in the sense that um, retailers have been struggling with that. We've seen um, durable goods orders down, retail sales um, down. Um, last week. So keep an eye on that. If that really starts to show a build in inventories, that's going to be a little bit bearish. Um, if it shows that those inventories are improving, could be bullish for us. Now we've got wholesale inventories as well. We've got a case shelter report, um, you know, kind of across the board. Our housing numbers have been terrible and we just have not cared at all. So maybe it won't make any difference at all today um, as that comes out. We've got the Fed, uh, Dallas Fed Manufacturing Survey coming out, um, not particularly a market mover, but we have certainly seen our manufacturing continue to show contraction um, in the United States, um, showing that um, our consumers are weak and we're seeing a contraction in orders. Now, if we take a look, we've got some auctions here this afternoon, some shorter term auctions to be paying attention to. There is a two year in there to pay attention to on the day. If we look through the rest of the week, well, by golly, we just don't have a whole lot this week. And that could play very favorably here for the market. Um, we've got pending home sales. We've got jobless claims. We've got um, our normal petroleum status. It's normally on uh, Wednesday, but they push that into Thursday and then that Chicago PMI. So a relatively light week as we prepare for another holiday uh, coming forward on the first of the year. So watch, watch that close. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. Now our earnings calendar, as we know, we're going to continue to lighten up and lighten up and lighten up as we go into the new year. So before the market opened today, we only have one company reporting. Well, actually one company reporting at all today, uh, G-R-O-Y not particularly a notable company reporting so i wouldn't expect a whole lot of inspiration for the market with that price move one of the things that's inspiring the market this morning however is we got news that china was lifting its restriction on international travel um, from a pandemic um, and that lifted some markets um, initially pretty strongly in um, Asia, but then we had a little bit of choppiness come in. And so we ended up 
closing mixed over um, in Asian markets um, last night. And one of the reasons is, of course, they are being really, really strained by um, pandemic um, issues over there. So you'll want to kind of keep in mind um, we got some challenges there, but we've got European markets um, pushing higher this morning as well, providing us a little bit of lift in energy. So we don't have a whole lot on the earnings calendar to provide inspiration. We don't have a whole lot on our economic calendar to provide inspiration. And considering the flight restrictions, um, just coming back from the holiday, we might expect a very low volume day. So you want to be um, watchful of that and be careful of, of jumping right in um, in the morning. I'm not saying we won't rally, but just jumping right in with that anticipation of a, a, a lots of upside move. Um, I do think it is possible, however, if they can push this hard enough, they could trigger a bit of a short squeeze. And the reason I say that is I think there's a lot of folks out there that have been uh, maybe um, loading up a little bit too soon considering um, the recession possibilities of 2023, loading up too soon, getting short or overly short. This might be the time where they try to trigger a little bit of a short squeeze. So watch those resistance levels and charts. And if they start to pop and go, we could see those algorithms really kick in and push hard for a bit of an upside move. Um, I think it might be on low volume though, so watch that close. Let's take a look at our um, so, or some stocks that could be setting up for today. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any securities. As a matter of fact, you need to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful um, in the market, um, particularly in these low volume times. Let's take a look at a few of these that could be um, very, very interesting. Well, first off, I want to take a look at gold. Um, my goodness, gold, um, a lot of pre-market activity going on here in gold. Right now, gold, as I look at it at this moment, is up $13, gold, gold futures anyway, $13.60 an ounce. And as you guys know, I've been talking about gold and silver here for a while. And as we continue to see the dollar show us weakness, we want to be paying close attention to the dollar. UUP had a big sharp pop down and rallying back up this morning. So a lot of volatility in the pre-market here on the dollar, um, a lot of pre-market volatility on gold. So we'll wanna watch that carefully. Um, we're running into some price resistance here in gold and the big challenge is whether or not we're gonna pop out of this level. If we do, um, that could be really good for these precious metals. So keep an eye on that. Silver would be another place you'll wanna keep an eye on. With the big moves in the dollar, we may also wanna be keeping a pretty close eye on copper like FCX, SCCO, getting a big move here in the pre-market here on SCCO. Some of those plays may become very, very interesting here in the market. Other places, take a look at energy. Now, energy is, has been kind of an interesting um, um, area of the market. We have seen a pretty substantial sell-off, and now we're getting a substantial pushback up here. Take a look at XLE or anything in that energy sector. As a matter of fact, we're pushing back into resistance areas. We saw some of those um, supplies um, show shortages and declines, and that's pushing us back up here um, in the market. That demand destruction that everyone was expecting in oil and gas hasn't seemed to appear just yet. So as we press toward these resistance areas in the chart, you wanna watch that carefully. If we were to break through these areas and hold, then we've got a very bullish situation on our hands here. However, if we push up into these areas and happen to show failure, then this might be just the downtrend that you wanna pick up for a short trade. So watch that carefully if we run into that price resistance. This could go either way on those energy companies, so watch that close. Now, ones that have been showing considerable bullishness would be those involved, heavily involved in refining. Notice that Halliburton has climbed right back up. We broke down and broke support rallied up, held the higher low here in the chart, 
recovered that support area and pushed on higher. So Halliburton may be trying to push on through this resistance level up here and we're seeing a lot of strength in that refining area. So watch that if that can push on through. Now Slumberjay would be a, another that pushed right on through. We broke support in here again. Broke that support, reversed, come back up, held it as support, and now we're back up here testing this resistance to see whether or not we can push on through. Watch that close. Refining holding up quite well. When we see refining doing a good job, we oftentimes see oil and oil exploration stocks do a good job. And boy, did we do that here. We had once again broke that support here in the chart rallied through made a higher low pushing on up here as you can see a rig doing very very well now sometimes i get criticized because i don't bring up you know um, inexpensive stocks very much um, it's often because there's a lot of risk in them but as you can see here in rig we've got a pretty good situation here forming up in this chart on rig so watch that closely for that upside move in the market um, if we look at some of the tech, um, tech is a little bit challenged here um, in um, some of these charts, but there are some trying to show signs of improvement. If we look at um, NVIDIA, NVIDIA broke down here pretty hard uh, just recently, finding a little bit of support. And you can see trying to find a few buyers here off of that support area. Now, if this can push on up, I would be watching this carefully for this resistance area up here and maybe that potential failure in the chart. I would be really watchful of that. AMD, AMD is another one that has been struggling heavily. And as you can see, rallying back to that resistance right here in the chart, we broke that support, rallied back up, tested that resistance, failing in here. Our downtrend is out in here, so this could still push higher before we see a little bit more downside. Just remember, if this is going to get bullish, we've got to break those downtrends, hold higher lows, and push on up. But if we take a look at Microsoft, well, Microsoft trying to push back here. We've got a support level in here trying to hold. Microsoft may be one of those favored to come back around to the upside, but overall, tech has been really, really challenged. And I'm gonna say the same on the financials. Um, uh, I didn't mean CLF, XLF. Um, by the way, steel with the dollar falling, steel may be another X, um, bullish area to look for, um, like CLF, X, um, US steel, things like that. If you take a look here at XLF, we broke these, um, these trends uh, to the upside here in XLF made lower highs, broke support levels, fell on through. We've rallied back up here. And I think we may be in that situation on this gap up open this morning where we really could see a favorable setup possibly for a short. So keep an eye on that here this morning. XLF um, on those financials not looking good. And if you look at stocks like BAC, um, all of these seem to be setting up more as a short than a bullish potential move. Um, so watch carefully there in the financials. So with that, guys, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I also want to um, hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Everyone had a safe Christmas. Um, remember, um, this week in Right Way Options is going to be kind of hit and miss. Um, I'll be in the room, I'll be out of the room. Um, won't be a whole lot going on here because I suspect, um, you know, after we get this blustering out in the morning that there could be a lot of soft and choppy price action on the day. And um, I'm just going to kind of enjoy, uh, continue enjoying family that I still have here and um, spend, take a little bit of extra time off. So just kind of keep that in mind. With you guys, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have great success in your trading. And I'll see you right back here, bright and early Wednesday morning. Wish you all the best.